Dialogue Tree, a short lecture created by William Agnew, David Noemichi, and Dan Rui. I'm going to talk to you about a dialogue tree. It is also called a conversation tree. Its structure has similarities with that of a binary tree, but it's not quite identical. In a binary tree, each non-leaf node has at most two children. No node can refer to an ancestor node as child. The worst case scenario is big O of n. In a dialogue tree, non-leaf node has between one and n nodes. A node can refer to an ancestor node as a child. The worst case scenario is tricky to compute because of the loops within it. We most commonly see the dialogue tree used in video games, but it's not limited to those. It's also used to simulate conversations between a user and a computer, automate customer support, and it's how most diagnostic tools find flaws, like, for example, a car diagnostic software. The implementation of dialogue tree is often based on conditional statements, where the state of an event determines the next possible state or event. In games, this property makes it applicable to both benign and adversarial environments. For example, in benign environments, a dialogue tree gives all the end possible continuations the player will be presented to by the game due to his answer or action, whereas in an adversarial environment, by looking at the end possibilities child node of a base event, the opponent can decide his optimal move in order to defeat the player. This is some example of dialogue tree code with a series of if and else statements. As you can imagine, in a large complex environment, this can get quite complex. So we also look at another implementation. For example, this conversation here, which is represented visually, is a dialogue tree. The arrows represent the statements made by the computer. This implementation uses XML, and this is actually the implementation that we used in an example. As you can see, the XML statements do form a tree. Here's another example of dialogue tree usage, a game of tic-tac-toe. This shows visually how a computer must compute all 13 board positions before deciding his best move. There are some pitfalls to a dialogue tree. Given an unknown decision, the implementations often loop back to parent nodes or default node, which are not often the appropriate answers. In a decision-making scenario, all possible nodes, or up to a certain fixed depth, must be visited before coming to a conclusion. For instance, unlike the tic-tac-toe scene earlier, a dialogue tree of a chess game will have a far greater number of nodes to visit because each piece has a given set of possible moves to be computed in conjunction with other pieces. Here's an example of dialogue tree usage in a small game I implemented in Flash, which I would not recommend, by the way. Here we have the player's character, represented by the stick figure in the foreground, and a computer-controlled character in the background. The player is presented with dialogue options, to which the computer will reply based on the player's selection. On the left is a visual representation of the dialogue tree. The player simply selects a dialogue, and the conversation continues. Thank you for watching our short lecture on dialogue trees.